Because that just sounds disgusting. <laughs> or maybe this is one of those scientific studies you hope nobody hears about. Alrighty, alrighty, I'm back again. It's Monday, Monday. Have a good one, uh, folks. And uh, I'm going to I'm gonna start doing it. I think I'm going to try and do a regular thing on Mondays in particular to start us off with something that might be called Strange Science News. Um, just to give us a little chuckle because we all know some of the great things that have come from scientific research and enterprise and what have you. Um, but I think it's a good idea to every so often point out some of the stranger things that we find out because of uh, scientific research and scientists and the work that we do. So not all bad things. I'm not going to be all critiquing science all the time, but, um, I figured it might be a little bit more lighthearted and humorous. Um, but first, of course, I want to make sure I give my usual plug. Um, if you haven't already, I hope you encourage and become, uh, encourage you to become a supporter of Cyworthy on Locals at cyworthy.locals.com. Um, and the reason is, is like, I, I love Cyworthy myself because it's actually a great um, place for nonpartisan science journalism and truly nonpartisan. I think nature and science and Scientific American and a lot of others have gone completely off the rails. Um, and so if you become a supporter of Cyworthy.locals.com, um, you are supporting Cyworthy, which does nonpartisan science journalism. Um, and you know what? It's as little as $3 a month as a supporter. Um, but if you, you can, of course, become a member of Locals and uh, join the Cyworthy community and just lurk for free. Um, but if you're a supporter, Cyworthy.locals.com, you get access to conversations with um, myself and other scientists who are there because as a supporter you can you can post you can share you can comment on other things as a member you can pretty much just watch and hit the like button so there's more things like that of course also as a supporter you get access to the Cyworthy conversations uh, that Gina and I do and 100% uh, of your support keeps Cyworthy independent and keeps them doing nonpartisan science journalism and truly nonpartisan if you want to see more of that I would say go over to Cyworthy.com which is where the main page of Cyworthy is and where you get to see the kinds of journalism they do in science, um, which is really good, nonpartisan science journalism. Um, you can give it once um, or you can subscribe. If you subscribe, it's $3 a month or as little as $3 a month. You can put in as large a value as you'd really like. Um, you can also just give once and get access um, here too. So just my plug, I encourage you to go over there. I get nothing from it. I actually really, really enjoy being part of cyworthy.locals.com. Um, they're a fun group to, to interact with and just talk on all things going on in science, um, from issues with, with uh, critical theory happening in science to some of the kinds of things we're going to talk about, like strange science. Like, I think we talked about dragonfly wings one day. That was fun. Um, any hoozle. On to the topic at hand. We have strange science news. This comes to us, oh, go away, courtesy of Live Science. Scientists convert plastic waste to vanilla flavoring. In the future, your vanilla ice cream may be made from plastic bottles. Not the most. I like vanilla ice cream, so I'm, I'm, I, <laughs> This comes to us courtesy of LiveScience.com. Um, of course, link in the description for you. Um, in the future, your vanilla ice cream may be made from plastic bottles. Scientists have figured out a way to convert plastic waste into vanilla flavoring with genetically engineered bacteria, according to a new study. Um, okay. <laughs> Vanillin, the compound that carries most of the smell and taste of vanilla, can be extracted natu naturally from vanilla beans or made synthetically. About 85% of vanillin is currently made from chemicals taken from fossil fuels, according to The Guardian. Oh, I did not know that. I'm going to think about that with respect to what I do in climate change. That's The, the things we make from petroleum are, are really stunning. So we got to think about that as we try to transition away from fossil fuels, right? Vanillin is found in a wide variety of food, cosmetic, pharmaceutical cleaning, and herbicide products, and the demand is growing rapidly, the authors wrote in the study. In 2018, the global demand for vanillin was about 40,800 no, 40, tons, 37,000 metric tons, and is expected to grow to 65,000 tons, 59,000 metric tons by 2025, according to the study published June 10th in the journal Green Chemistry. The demand for vanillin far exceeds the vanilla bean supply, so scientists have resorted to synthetically producing vanillin. For the new study, researchers used a novel method to convert plastic waste to vanillin as a way to both supply vanillin and reduce plastic pollution. So, you know, you know there is a thing that I, I am all for ways of trying to get rid of plastic because I have lived around... Um, 
lived around landfills a couple of times and it's disgusting. Um, and it, you know, it's not helpful for wildlife and things like that. So, you know, recycle your plastic, please. It's good for that, but it's also, you, it's actually cheaper to buy recycled by the way. Um, so buy recycled shop recycled. It's cheaper. Um, at least in my experience, it's cheaper. Others may disagree. I'm just talking from my experience on that one. Um, so yeah, you know, finding ways to reduce plastic pollution is great, but I'm just like, I'm thinking of plastic. I'm thinking of water bottle and ice cream. Ugh. <laughs> Previous studies showed how to break down plastic bottles made from, oh God, polyethylene terephthalate. I can't pronounce that, into its basic subunit, also known as teraflathic acid, and I'm definitely not pronouncing that right, in the new study, two researchers at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland genetically engineered E. coli bacteria to convert teraflathic acid into vanillin. Terafl I, okay, I'm just going to call it tea acid from here because I can't pronounce it. Tea acid and vanillin have very similar chemical compositions, and the engineered bacteria only needs to make minor changes to the number of hydrogens and oxygens that are bonded to the same carbon backbone. The researchers mingled their genetically engineered bacteria with tea acid to, and kept them at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 37 degrees Celsius, for a day, according to The Guardian. About 79% of tea acid subsequently converted to vanillin. I gotta say, that's pretty damn good to actually get that conversion. Again, though, I'm thinking to myself... I don't know how I feel about having the remnants of water bottles be converted into something I might eat. But then again, I do drink out of them every so often. I don't know how I feel about this. The plastic, <laughs> the plastic waste crisis is now, global plastic waste crisis is now recognized as one of the most pressing environmental issues facing our planet. Side note about this, the plastic straws thing is a very, very, very tiny fraction of the amount of plastic that's in the ocean. So, no, I mean, yeah, you can move away from plastic straws. Don't get the paper ones because it is like drinking through a number two pencil. Um, but, you know, you could move towards bamboo or metal straws. I actually have metal straws myself here for I take them on the road, when they, particularly when somebody offers me a paper straw. Blech. You know, take them on the road with me. I actually have a cleaner and everything. You know, I've got a little cleaning bushel brush that I can go in there and clean out the straw. I'm going to take them with me on the road. Um, and I do take them with me on the road because it's much better than a stupid paper straw when you're drinking through a number two pencil. Blech. About 1 million plastic bottles are sold every minute around the world, and only 14% are recycled, according to The Guardian. Again, I would like to know where The Guardian is getting that from, but anyway. Those that are recycled can only be turned into fibers for clothing or carpets. Our work challenges the perception of plastic being a problematic waste, and instead demonstrates its use as a new carbon resource which high value product, from which high-value products can be made. Co-author Stephen Wallace, senior lecturer of biotechnology at the University of Edinburgh, told The Guardian. Now the study authors hope to further improve the bacteria to be able to convert more tea acid into vanillin. Read more about this technology in The Guardian. Okay, um... I still can't get over... I still can't... Yeah. I... Yeah. Ugh. I'm sorry, I keep picturing plastic water bottle in... A, plastic water bottle as vanilla ice cream now. Ugh. I... Gonna have to work on the messaging with that one, because that just sounds disgusting. <laughs> or maybe this is one of those scientific studies you hope nobody hears about. But my gosh, I mean, look at our remarkable achievement that we can convert plastic into vanillin and put it as the flavoring in vanilla ice cream. Or, you know, think of how many things vanilla extract is used for, um, like cookies, cookies, cakes. Uh, every number of different things are use vanilla extract, and they are right. You know, you, you, you got to make sure you don't overdo it with the vanilla beans. But... <laughs> I'm just like, what? <laughs> what? And, and for the number of things it's found in, I can actually see this being potentially really, really useful. I just can't get past the vanilla ice cream being made from plastic bottles. So <laughs> Something about that just doesn't seem right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that was the first installment of what I hope will become a regular series on this channel of strange science news. I wonder, let me go over to The Guardian and see what this looks like real quick. Scientists convert used plastic bottles into vanilla flavoring. They pretty much copied this from 
the, okay, Live Science pretty much took this from The Guardian, so things like that. Interesting. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't get past the... I can't honestly get past the thing of plastic bottles becoming vanilla ice cream. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Well, that was your edition of first edition of well, this regular recurring series, I hope, on Mondays of Strange Science News. <laughs> um, if you like this video, please hit the like button on your way out. Um, subscribe to the channel, comment on the video, share the video, all that good jazz. Um, and, you know, again, like I said, cop on over to cyworthy.locals.com and chime in there. Um, and I hope you stop by because it's a, it's a fun place to hang out with all the scientists and science enthusiasts, uh, that is not as crazy as Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or any of the other stupid platforms. Locals is amazing. Till next time, I'm Adrian signing off. This has been your strange news of the day, strange news of the week. Uh, and I hope you stay curious. <laughs>